My name is Bianca Ananas. I am a teacher. This is my third year in Lawrence High School. I am actually an immigrant, so I came here from Manila, Philippines. So I went to Tufts University 2008 to get like an education degree. I met my husband there. He preferred to stay here. It's like, fine. Um, so I officially moved here 2010. I've been living in the Chelmsford Lowell area ever since. The thing with my immigrant experience that's a little bit different than others is that I know how to speak English. That really helped me assimilate. So it wasn't too, too much of a change in terms of communication, but still like many cultural differences, like going to a supermarket, for me, like those big stop and shops or like, like scared me. I was like, there's two whole aisles of ice cream in the Philippines. It's like one freezer. Like, I'm like, what is this? I can't, I can't. But even seeing like different races, ethnicities, and especially like at tough predominantly it's white parts of Asia are more homogenous I don't know it was like a mind shift almost those little things make you realize that you're not home but at the same time like now I feel like I'm part of both worlds like it's weird like as an immigrant you feel like you're part of both worlds but at the same time you're not completely part of both worlds I wear like different hats in Lawrence in a sense that I'm a history teacher I'm the moderator of the charity club and I'm also a one goal teacher which is basically helping students with their post-secondary careers whether it's college community college or tech school especially students who might be uh, high risk I live with my husband and my four-year-old son since I moved here I don't really have family in the area for me like the social distancing isn't a problem I haven't seen my parents in over two years but we have all these things you were looking forward to now it's very disappointing teachers are finding so many different ways to reach out to their students even if it's like calling them from home emailing them even to make sure that they're just okay. In terms of the bigger picture, Lawrence Public Schools has been really good with dispersing electronic devices or technology to the students. Like there's one laptop per family at least given, plus they're also providing students with internet access for those who don't have any. Lawrence is an immigrant city. Thinking about ELL or English language, students, they don't get exposure to the English language outside of school. So I think we're going to see real discrepancies and language issues when we come back. A lot of our kids are also working more during this time, which worries a lot of the teachers. But it's also not just their students, but their families working a lot. From a teacher's perspective, we're hoping that there will be some supports when we come back. But at the same time, we don't know. In this particular time, I'm trying to learn new ways to communicate. If I put a reading up, some things that might be difficult for them to understand. I'm going to supplement that with recording myself going over like a PowerPoint or recording myself reading the reading. Also like chunking lessons into smaller increments so it's not overwhelming. Like even if it's just very few students giving quality responses makes me feel like the work that I'm putting up, the work that I'm putting into creating or modifying a lesson is worth it. I think what it's teaching me is that we really need to be able to incorporate remote learning in the classroom and face-to-face. And I'm really hoping that maybe every student be able to have like a laptop so that like the remote learning can be taught at the very beginning of a school year and it becomes something that they're more used to um, because we're finding that compared to other districts where they've had the laptop at the beginning or even like other classes where it's computer-based work the kids are having no issues doing the work versus like oh this is something new I feel like that's also how it's going to be more like for them if they go to college in talking about my Asian heritage which isn't Chinese My experience was like, you could hear more kids like asking me about the virus. I asked my other history teacher, so 
are you guys getting as many questions about COVID-19 than I am? And they were like, uh, no, not really. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of a good opportunity to open up discussion like why do you think you're asking that question even if I'm not a doctor kind of like making sure they are more sensitive being more open other students are sensitive to that or like they can pick that up and they call each other out and it's different to when a teacher calls a student out versus a student calling another student out it has like a different impact I feel like it was just more immaturity but also lack of knowledge and understanding I did like a quick reflection activity before LHC had theirs. There was one reflection that mentioned that even if she's Hispanic, she feels that there is still racism in general towards immigrants, not just Asian Americans, uh, because she expressed that she experienced some racism while going to the food store. And I think like the virus has really like highlighted the flaws in the systems that we live in, how socioeconomic status plays in, like, who gets impacted more. We just need to remember to work together. Lawrence, it's such a close-knit community, and it's going to get through this. If we've learned anything in history, it eventually becomes okay. Lawrence is a resilient community. The crises can bring the worst and the best.